In this video, I'm gonna be talking about variables and why you need to know about them if you are going to be using the Shortcuts app on Mac OS. Now, this is the third video in a series of videos I'm doing all about Shortcuts, a beginner's guide, if you will. So be sure to check out those other videos down in the description. Uh, but for now, let's get over to uh, the task in hand and uh, variables. And let me explain uh, exactly how you can use those in Shortcuts. And first of all, exactly what is a variable? Well, a variable is essentially some piece of data that we are going to uh, assign a name to and then use later on in our shortcut to uh, actually form part of the uh, later actions in the shortcut. This will all make perfect sense I'm sure as we uh, go through it. So I'm going to start by creating a new uh, shortcut and uh, again if you have not uh, used shortcuts before then be sure to check out the first two videos where I explain all about creating actions and how to use the interface uh, and so on but for now I'm just going to click into this new shortcut that I've just created and let's have a look at uh, how we're going to uh, build something out. So a variable, as I say, is essentially a piece of data. It can either be a piece of data that we derive somehow from some other action, or it can be something that we actually ask the, uh, the user for uh, as a form of input. So let's just do something really simple. We're going to uh, have a little alert that pops up on the screen, uh, or rather ask a question where we ask somebody for their name and then have an alert that pops up on the screen to give, uh, you know, to say hello to them or something like that really simple and pretty much useless example. However, it does serve the purpose of explaining how to use these things. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and there is a command in shortcuts, which is ask. So if you are asking for some form of input, so I'm going to click on this one and there, there you see it, ask for input. So I'm going to add that one in. And here we've got a couple of different uh, points that we can uh, adjust. So you'll notice here that it uh, says ask for, and then there's this blue text here, and then with, and then something here. So when you are looking at actions, just bear in mind that anything that is in white is usually some sort form of description or something like that related to the action itself. And anything in blue is usually something that you can actually adjust or change. Now, in this case, the uh, ask for where it says text, uh, this is actually the data type. I'll be covering data types in more detail in the next video. But for the time being, uh, all you need to know is that you can either have it as text or you might be asking for a number. You may be asking for a URL, a date, a time or something like that. So they, they these are uh, different types of data that you may be asking for but we're going to keep it simple for the moment and ask for just text and then here it says with prompt so we're asking for text with some form of prompt now the prompt being uh, what we're going to display to the user so that they uh, understand what it is exactly that we want from them so how about I just type in here uh, what is your name just like that. Uh, now, if I were to run this right now, I mean, it's uh, not going to do a huge amount, but if I just run that now, you can see that it pops up this little pop-up. Uh, this is, by the way, completely separate from the Shortcuts app. It just happens to be over the top of it so that we can uh, see it at the same time. So if I just type in, what is your name? And uh, I type in my name, Alec, and then click on done. You can see that that uh, output there has now come into the shortcut. Uh, and if there were any more actions, it could potentially be passed down to uh, to anything that happens uh, further down the, uh, the line. So uh, let's actually do something with that, shall we now? And let's say that we want to have a little alert box that pops up and just says hi to whoever it is that's typed in their name. So I'm going to look for an alert. Uh, so here we go. We've got show alert. It could also have been a little notification that pops out from the side, uh, but let's use the alert. And now it's saying uh, show, uh, do you want to continue? So we don't want to uh, show something like that. We want to actually just have a response, which is to, uh, to their name. So let me just type in here, uh, hi, uh, and then I want to uh, actually put, whoops, Daisy, I need to delete that other. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so now if I was to just run that, uh, you can see that what would happen is if I clicked on run, it's going to ask for our name again and click done. And then it just says, hi. Well, that's not very personal, isn't it? So wouldn't it be good if we could actually incorporate the person's name into that little uh, structure there? So, well, we can do that if I come into where it says, hi. I can actually use any bit of data that's already in the uh, in the action itself from the uh, the input. So this essentially is a variable. This is what we're talking about. So if I right click in the uh, alert message uh, and you can see that we've got this option down here to insert variable. Now insert variable 
Um, there are different kinds of input that we can put into there, um, but let's just click on this one, select variable, and this is going to uh, select a magic variable. So there are a couple of different types of magic variable uh, of variables. There is explicit variables where we're going to give them an actual name, and then we can call that wherever we want in the uh, the rest of the actions. Um, but magic variables are basically shortcuts built in uh, method where it can actually just pull out uh, certain variables without you having to name them. This isn't necessarily a good practice to get into which we'll come to in a moment but for now let's uh, use this so you can see that now it is asking me to uh, select a magic variable and the magic variable the only thing that's magic about it is that <laughs> it just identifies all the potential variables for you so here it's saying uh, uh, show alert and we want to add something in there and you can see that we've got this one highlighted provide uh, provided input so if I click on that one now what we're going to get is it will say show alert and it's going to say hi provided input <laughs> explanation mark what does that mean well it means that whatever they put in here so if i put in alec uh, and then i click done uh, you can see that now the alert says hi alec because it is taken the name from uh, there so why is that not the uh, best way to do it? Well, it's okay for very simple things like that. I mean, that's a very easy, straightforward example. Uh, but what if you wanted to get multiple different bits of data, multiple different variables, and then have those feeding in at different points? Well, it can get a little bit confusing when you have lots of these provided input sections here, these magic variables. So uh, let me just perhaps give uh, another example of that. So I'll add in a second question. So I'm going to ask two questions now. Uh, and I'm going to ask... Um, uh, whoopsie daisy that's the wrong one <laughs> I want to ask for input again so let me say I'm going to uh, say ask for text with a prompt where do you live and so we're going to have uh, two different variables now so now I'm going to uh, ask them say hi whatever your name is what's the weather like in wherever you live so uh, we'll do the same again I've just added the alert in separately again just so that we can do this from scratch you'll see what I'm getting at in a moment so hi I'm going to put in here I'm going to say uh, hi and then I want to put their name uh, what is the weather like in and then we'll put where they live so here if I wanted to add in the name I would click in here again as we did before and I would put uh, insert magic variable so insert variable select variable and we'll take this one so we want to add in the name and then we will add in the place where they live in here so I'm going to do exactly the same set variable and we'll take this provided input like that so now it says hi provided input what is the weather like in provided input <laughs> so let's just run this and we'll see what's going to happen what is your name Alec click on done where do you live Thailand and then click on done and now it's got the output hi Alec what is the weather like in Thailand so it did work however you can see that this may be getting a little bit confusing uh, as you start building out more complex actions uh, or complex shortcuts I should say then using these magic variables where you've got things like provided input this provided input that is going to get very confusing how do I know that I've got the right one how do I know that I'm calling the right thing well it's a lot easier if you actually give these uh, variables all names so what we could do here is if I wanted underneath here instead of uh, just going straight onto the next section uh, I could actually give this a specific name as a variable so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the set variable command so I'll come to here and uh, search for set variable there we go and I'm going to put this one just beneath here uh, and I'm going to uh, I am going to use the provided input because it's coming straight after this uh, this name so uh, this is the uh, let's call it username just so that we don't get confused with uh, uh, the actual variable name so I'm going to call this username and now let's do exactly the same thing again but for the uh, location and I'm going to call this user location okay so now we have got uh, two variables and I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete these uh, magic variables out from here um, because what we want to do now is we want to add in their name so what I'm going to do here is go to insert uh, variable 
and then what I'll do is can you see now what we've got in here is we've actually got this list of variables it actually appears in there so we can just drag uh, we can just click on this to add this in directly from this little drop down so just once again where that was uh, I'm in this little message that I want to display I'm going to click uh, right click with the mouse uh, insert variable and any variables that we have named within this particular shortcut uh, will now appear here uh, so I'm going to click on username and then if I come to here what is the weather like here we go insert variable and we'll put user location uh, you can already see how that is a lot more clear from uh, from the point of view of uh, going and doing any editing or things like that uh, at a later date you can see exactly the inputs that it's taking so the variable is uh, username and the uh, location is just given there as well so now if I run that this will do exactly the same as before with a bit of luck so I'll type in my name and I'll type in my location and then click on done and there you go it says exactly the same hi Alec what is the weather like in Thailand so uh, that is once again a bit of a, a, a sort of <laughs> useless case <laughs> as a uh, shortcut goes however it does demonstrate the uh, the way that variables can be used so let me show you another example now of something that is uh, was one that I gave in the first video actually which was generating a QR code so I'm going to just come and uh, create a, uh, a new action but I'll do it uh, from here and I'm going to do it using variables this time so we've now got uh, generate uh, QR code from uh, URL okay so what we're going to do in here is we are going to uh, basically uh, take a URL from uh, rather than typing it in manually which is what we did before by the way there is a built-in generate QR code uh, function or action in here I should say uh, now what we did in the first very basic example was we actually just manually typed out the uh, the URL in here uh, but how about you want to be able to copy and paste something from a uh, from a website or something like that uh, and then actually create the UR, uh, create the QR code from that so you're going to take some sort of input well in that case what you can do is is you can uh, use the uh, <laughs> the clipboard the name escaped me there for a moment so if I type in clipboard it's going to say uh, get clipboard and so that is going to get anything that you copy as a URL uh, it is it is going to uh, take that information uh, and now let's uh, let's actually give that a variable name there is a bit of a simpler way to do this but I'm just being very explicit about it so that you can uh, see so if I go to set variable like this I'll show you a shortcut to do this I'm just using this to uh, demonstrate <laughs> so let's give this a variable name uh, let's call this URL for QR code like that uh, and that's going to go to uh, the, uh, copy from the clipboard uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, then use this uh, QR code function again generate QR code uh, and you can see how it has actually already just assumed that we're going to want that and it's used that it is not the magic variable though it is the explicit variable uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to a website uh, and I'm going to copy copy the URL and then I'm going to uh, just come and run this so now that we've copied a URL if I run this it's actually going to uh, create a QR code uh, from that particular uh, URL and in fact the URL if I uh, just output this I could just delete that and run it again uh, the output there was actually the uh, Take One Tech website again takeonetech.io slash <laughs> no, slash nothing just takeonetech.io <laughs> so um, there we go that is uh, how to uh, basically use a URL as the input I will just show you though just because uh, that was a bit sneaky I will just show you how with that particular QR code uh, uh, action like this um, you can either do it from text and um, but what we could also have done is insert variable uh, and we can also just insert directly in there because there is a variable already built in which is clipboard so we don't actually need to define it like that although if you wanted to sort of copy multiple different things and give them all their own uh, explicit variable name then you could do that uh, but as I say you can just actually get clipboard here like this so that would work exactly the same if I just run that one then it has given us the output uh, the QR code from that particular uh, URL so uh, that is just a, a very brief sort of introduction really to variables and it's 
intended to just get you understanding uh, the way that you use those and the way that having explicit variables that are named uh, allows you to create sort of a whole batch of different data points or different values or things like that uh, that you can then use at multiple points throughout the rest of your action. Something that will be very important when we get into uh, building out more complex uh, shortcuts. Now the next part I'm going to cover is actually about data types and I touched on this earlier so this is going to be coming up right now in the next video over on the uh, right hand side so I'll see you there.